a ci cd environment you know there is it's an automated environment where somebody checks in it takes the code it will build it in this case you know it will first build the angular code generate the public folder and then builds the dotnet code uh, publishes the zip of both angular and dotnet that is picked up and deployed to azure uh, or any cloud environment example so it all happens one after the other as a stage stage one is build angular stage two is build dotnet stage three is uh, 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 publish the artifact stage four is deployed to Azure. So how all these things can be connected together uh, is one is you know there you can always you know uh, every job you can there is a way to configure. Once this job is done, you can say uh, trigger another build or trigger another pipeline after this is complete. So you can always link them up that way. But uh, you know there is a easier way or, or a better way of doing it is using pipelines so if i now create a new pipeline example uh, .net so i'm going to create a pipeline here instead of selecting freestyle i'm going to select pipeline now pipeline is not using the ui which we saw so far uh, pipeline will be using this groovy script so which i'll show it now so yeah so now here if you see you don't see all those options of build steps or anything you will basically see something called a pipeline script which is right now empty now again here you know what important things that you need to know uh, configure in the pipeline is you know uh, one is how many uh, whether you how 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 old builds you want to keep example and and other thing is you know if uh, especially pipelines will have parameters as well example we discuss in our jobs also you know whether you want to build a debug release version or release version so how do you pass those right you can do this in jobs also but here i'm showing the pipeline so you can create parameters for your pipeline so example for my for this pipeline let's say i want to i want to i want the user or whoever is triggering the pipeline to select the uh, whether it's a debug or a release the configuration of your build example or you want somebody to uh, select uh, 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 the release nodes which is required for his build so these are the parameters that you can select uh, example if i just add one for now uh, and then you know i'll add a string uh, parameter um, or let me add a choice so choice is you know configuration type example so here I'm specifying it. The options can be either a debug or a release. Now in your project, you will we may have multiple, but you know here I have the two choices: configuration type and build. Now I can use this name in my Jenkins pipeline to directly access the value that was selected in my pipeline and use it to pass on to my MS build and other stuffs. But yeah, so that is you can have multiple parameters. We'll see how how it looks when we're triggering the pipeline. Again here. Uh, everything this these remain the same i can schedule it and i can uh, so i can schedule i can do a polling and all this stuff for the pipelines also and uh, and then you know now this is where the pipeline script will come in here now i can have a uh, sorry okay i can have you know uh, inline script where i can manage my uh, have a script as part of here or I can have my script in my as part of my source code, and then I can say that you know pick pick my uh, Jenkins file from uh, create a file called Jenkins file in my project. I can have a Jenkins file here. If I go back to yeah, this is a root. I can have a Jenkins file here, just like Docker YAML. I can have a Jenkins file, and I can say that you know the the complete pipeline comes in from. Uh, file called Jenkins from the source code. So in this case, you know, I'll select the script. It is always recommended to keep it in your repositories so that it you, you will you'll be able to ma maintain the the complete history of the changes of the pipeline and everything, you know. But here I'll use the script for uh, for this purpose. Now, how does now let me use a simple. Uh, this uh, sorry, this is uh, okay. So now this is how your. Um, a simple pipeline looks like so you will define uh, everything uh, this uh, no rather this this is something called a groovy script groovy language it is a groovy language uh, 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 to define the pipeline okay so generally <coughs> in a, in 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 most of the tools 
you will mostly use either Groovy, YAML, or Shell script. Right? One of them, most of the tools use them. So YAML is is also mostly used. Uh, Groovy is mainly used in Jenkins and few other tools, and Shell script is um, is 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 also used in automation side. Uh, right? So yeah. So that in this case we're using Groovy. Okay. So. So here, when we're defining the pipeline, we can def uh, every pipeline will have stages, and you can have multiple stages defined uh, here. So uh, now, one other thing we can specify is just like your job, here you can specify which agent you want to use in case of uh, pipeline. Now, uh, now in, in our jobs, we are using the .NET agent. So here, if I if I say any master will decide uh, to based on availability, it will pick up the agent. So we can also specify, you know, specify the label of what we need. Example, I might say master. So what, what it means is, you know, I'm saying run this pipeline in the master node, but run my jobs in the .NET agent. So so I have I will have uh, two kind of nodes running, one for pipeline, one for, uh, uh, one for the jobs. Okay, so now what, what you can do here, right? Example now, now again, you know, what we, did, what we have done so far, you know, my first stage is to build uh, Angular code, right? And then I will have one more stage, which is to build uh, my dot, right? So my first stage is, is a dot, oh. my first stage is an Angular stage, Angular code. And then second second uh, is dot net. I can now I will have you know in a, in a real world I will have other stages. One as I said to to collate all the uh, output artifacts and save it into a repository or into artifact server. Then use one more stage to deploy it as a app service. I will have all those stuff right. So in this case you know we'll have two uh, uh, stages. Now how do you and then you know there is a Jenkins has this pipeline syntax. Uh, helper, which will help you to generate the syntax for for most of the common artifacts or you know common steps, right? Example, if you want to, say, to publish it to an uh, Azure Web App, and you can you can specify all the values that you need. Example, uh, I can specify my Azure credentials here, select the resource group, and say generate, and I have my script ready, which I can copy into my uh, as a step here, example. So this will generate, if you're new into Groovy and everything, this will help you to generate. Example, if I want to, I use the archive, uh, right? If I want to archive, you know, I will I'll give the path. Example, now this is the path which I want to archive. So I can go here and then say generate, and it will generate me the, which I can copy into my, as a stage number three example. So this will really help uh, to ensure the syntax, everything is managed. So in this case, you know, uh, in, in, in our case, we're trying to trigger an existing job or existing build, right? So that is generally, you know, that is the task for build a job. And here I can select, you know, .NET uh, uh, Angular build. Uh, sorry, once again, I don't know which one did I. So I, I'm basically giving uh, the full path of the So if I go to webinar and that I have Angular uh, build job. So if I go back to my script and then I'll say build a job and then I'll say Angular build job. Okay, and then you know I can uh, and then I'll generate a script. Now I have my script. I will copy and add it as a step in this in the run the step instead of echo. I will do and build Angular. And similarly, in order to build a .NET, I'll, I'll, I'll just change the name of the job, which is, um, if I go back to my dot, uh, album view .NET job, right? So this is my name of my job. So this, is, this will take care of building the Angular, this will take care of building the job. Now I can have one more stage, you know, where I can archive the, uh, as I said, you know, archive the artifacts, right? And I, here I can have either a copy command or I can go here and, and, and go back to uh, pipeline helper. Right, 
right? I can have a pipeline helper go here and do an um, archive and then gender the script. Here, this will be rest. Okay, now these are steps. So what I'll do again for this purpose is, you know, you will ideally give your relative path of your uh, debug or release folder where you have the source code. You know, for now, I'll just give one folder for our understanding purpose. I'll select this file, this path. You know, it will, in a real world, it will be a real uh, relative path. Okay, so I'm going to select this path and then I'll say apply. So now what I have here, okay, I'll have to, to it's a it's a skip character in case of Jenkins, so you should follow it up with two. Okay, so now now what happens is it's not a trend. So now if I build this build this particular parameter, now if you see, if you remember we we added configuration type as a parameter. Now here, uh, what are options I gave? I can see the. I can see the uh, the options which are there. I can select either release or a debug, and this variable name can be referred in the pipeline to get the value which I've selected here, and accordingly pass on to the job or and use it in the script. Now, once I do a build, uh, build, okay, it is not. So if it says, you know, it has started, but something went wrong. So if you see, there's a syntax error. So let me go back, configure, probably there's a issue in the script. Right, so there's a, these are the steps, and then you have a stage. There's one more stage. Yeah, something's wrong here. There's an probably extra. So it was basically syntax error. So now I now I have three stages, one for Angular.net and Archive. Now I'll do a save and do a build. I can select anyone, anything, and then now I'll go ahead and see the out. It's still not done. Okay, something else is. So this is the stage one. Two. Okay. So the closing for the pipeline was missing. Okay. So now I'll do a. Hopefully, it should work now. Build. Build. Now it it is able to continue. So now it will start the pipeline, and the first thing it will do is it will first run the Angular build job. Now, while it is running, you can still go into individual job, and if you see, it is waiting for, uh, it will continue with uh, this particular job, and then you know it has started to build ang build the Angular in in the in the .NET agent while your pipeline is still running in the master agent. So, if I go to webinar uh, .NET, now now if I go into here, it is still running in the master node while the Angular build is running in the uh, .NET agent node. Uh, once this is done, it will it will wait until this job is complete. Then it will get into the next job, next stage where the .NET is built. Now it is building the .NET. It will go ahead and uh, complete and then do the archiving part. So the view here, what you will see here is if you go into .NET Angular, you will see this kind of a view, which again, there are a lot of plugins which you can use to modify and change this. But uh, there's a default view where for every execution, it will show the status and the time taken in each stage. Example here, it says, you know, Angular code took 35 seconds, this took 17, and it is still going on, and there's an error in the archiving, right? So, so this is, you know, this is uh, uh, the view where you can see uh, every time for every, every execution, what is the state, and you can get into logs and see if I click on logs, it will take me to that stage. So it says now, something is wrong in my path right so ideally it should if the path is correct it should work uh, but yeah so this is you know this is the pipeline side of it now you can do you know uh, uh, you can do uh, anything whether it's a docker container image or deploying to azure deploying to aws everything can be under the stage here if you're if you're running a unit test cases in your project if you want to automatically 
test your APIs after deployment, it can be staged. So it now depending on your requirement and the steps, you will define the stages, you define the steps. And since it's a it's a script, uh, it's a coding, you know, if it, since it's a script, now in a, in a bigger uh, multiple projects or bigger organization, you know, most of the projects, uh, maybe every project will have Angular or .NET. So the scripts can be developed in such a way, you know, to reuse the steps. These steps can be defined as a common step uh, in, in a common repository, and then you know, the pipelines can reuse them. So that's more to do with uh, like like just like coding, reusability, and uh, and uh, you know, making it uh, easy to manage. But you know, this is the very basic uh, steps that you will do in a Jenkins to create a CI pipeline as a job for .NET uh, and for Angular, and you will use the Groovy script to create a pipeline where you can invoke individual jobs, or you can, the, whatever job I've created, you can invoke them as a command directly also. You need, you need not create a job and then invoke it in a pipeline. But yeah, this gives you more, more different, it's just about organizing, right? You can have a different job for Angular, different for .NET, and then you have one pipeline which connects everything together.